Hi everyone, Bandana here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Warno and a preview of the two new divisions coming for the Nemesis 1 DLC. The 101st Airborne and the 56th Airborne Brigade for the Russians. So, today we're going to take a look at the 101st first and then we're going to take a look at the 56th. We'll also take a look at some of the 56th units in-game just because they have some really interesting stuff. And then we'll have a look at the new map that's coming, Urban Front Line. Get everything in in one go. Because I think that the patch with the map in is going to come at the same time as the release of the Nemesis 1 DLC. So I actually recorded this once, and then they patched it and put in some models that were missing and things. So I will give the same disclaimer that this is a work-in-progress version a work in progress build and there may be changes to prices and things like that but i think now the majority of the models and everything else are done so that should all be set in stone it is literally just that prices or a small amount of numbers may or may not change so let's get straight into it some interesting stuff in both divisions here we have the mule Supply Mule, 300 supply, 20 points apiece, so a little bit expensive, but you get 20 on a card. Just a little supply buggy that runs around the place. It's a really nice model, so this is a brand new model. They had this buggy, or a version of this buggy in that looked a bit so-so, but it actually looks fantastic now they've finished it. And the amount of detail they're putting on these new models, can I just say, is really nice. You'll notice it as we go through. So that's the buggy. Then you've got the Supply Goat, and this will feature in other parts of this division. This is a weird vehicle. I've never seen this in real life. I don't remember seeing it in movies or TV or anything. I don't know if anyone else has. But it reminds me of, like, vehicles you see driving around at airport. But I guess that kind of makes sense since they're the airborne division. But this appears a few times. But this is a Supply variant with 500 Supply, 25 points, 12 per card. Then we've got the standard UH-60 supply, we've seen this before. The Chinook supply, we've seen it before. The OH-58C command, the UH-60 command, and the Humvee command. All things we've seen before, other than the first two there, but, you know, really nice model, especially this one. I love the detail on all of the boxes and things. Okay, the more interesting tab of this division. So, first thing is... There are no forward deployable troops in the infantry tab. You heard me. This is an airborne division, but there are no forward deployable troops. And that also applies to the 56th when we get there. So there are a couple of forward deployable units, but they are in recon. Otherwise, nothing is forward deployable. So it's not that kind of airborne division. It's not like the 82nd. So you'll notice that a lot of these units are unique to this division and it's because they've got aero at the front of their names but most of them have the same weapons with a few differentiations here and there but we'll run through everything so we have the aero m60 7.62 millimeter machine gun squad and a 12.7 millimeter machine gun squad same as we've seen before obviously the humvee and blackhawk as transport options then we have the MP Patrol, again can come in a Humvee or a Blackhawk, standard MP Patrol here, nothing special. And then we have the MP Patrol M67, M67 recoilless rifle. It used to be one of the most amazing units in the game when it first came out into early access, but has been significantly nerfed since and needed it, to be honest. The Aero Fire Team Leader, three of these on a card, very small squad. Aero Fireteam AT4 and the Aero Fireteam Dragon with a Dragon 2, all coming in the Humvee. Then we have the M274 Mule with an M40 recoilless rifle. Look at that. Isn't that a nice model as well? Look at the detail on it. You've got all the ammo on the back. Again, I think it's just a really nice little model. I think they've done a very good job with this, as I say. Okay. Aero Rifles Leader comes in a Humvee or a Blackhawk. Nine-man squad, pretty big with the law. You've got standard Aero Rifles, we've seen them before. Nine-man squad here with the law again. Then you've got the Aero Rifles Dragon, a nine-man squad with a Dragon 2. These guys are all coming in the Humvee or the Blackhawk. 
And then you have the arrow rifles AT4 at the end here. This is a 13-man squad, so big chunky squad can only come in the Chinook because of its size and has the AT4 launcher. So nice melee squad, good anti-tank, and three M249s. So plenty of damage output against infantry as well. The Aero Engineers leader, which come in the Humvee or the Blackhawk, with those flash launchers. That's a leader with flash launchers. Don't mess with that. And then we have the Aero Engineers, 10-man squad with those satchel charges. Then we've got the Green Berets leader. We've also seen these in the Terro Territorial Commando Sud, even. So these guys also come in the Chinook because they're a 12-man squad. Again, very beefy. But then we have the Green Berets ODA. They've got quite a selection of weapons here, including the AT-4. And then finally, we have the TOW-2 launcher, the Aero TOW-2, which comes on either the GOAT, which is the same as before, but without any of the backing on, or a Blackhawk. Now, there is a bit of a surprise in all of these units. Did anyone spot it? It was very recent. It was the last thing I clicked on, and it was the Green Berets ODA. I didn't want to mention it, because I wanted to see if anyone would spot it. So if you did spot it, let me know down in the comments. I'm sure someone did, and they'll be like scrambling to type in the comments already before I said this, that I didn't point out the obvious thing here, which is there are four weapon slots. This is the first unit in the game to have four weapon slots. So we now have the M16A2, the M249, an M21, and an AT4. So four weapon slots. There has been a lot of talk about this over the many months and whether we would get four weapon slots and obviously stuff's been said behind the scenes that we couldn't talk about, but there you go. It is finally here. Welcome to four weapon slots. Now, where is my SAS upgrade? I want my SAS to have all the weapons, the British SAS. Okay, let's move on to artillery. So, nothing too exciting in the artillery tab for these guys. They have the 81mm mortar and the 107mm mortar, which can come in the Gamma Goat or in the Chinook. And then they have the 105mm, again, can be towed by the Goat or brought in the Chinook. And then the 155mm, which comes on the M35, or towed by the M35, I should say, because of its size. Other than that, nothing to write home about. It's just the standard. Over in the tank tab... We have this little beauty, the Mule Ito. Look at all the Itos on the back of it. Again, with the, the modeling and the work that's been done on these, I do think it looks very good. So this is the Ito 20 pen. This thing's tiny, right? And then the Humvee is this big, but the Humvee has good stealth and so does the Mule. I kind of feel like the Mule should have slightly better stealth because it's so much smaller personal thing probably wouldn't work for balance but i just like the fact that it's so much smaller it should have like exceptional stealth or something it's like the little uh quad bikes that you used to have in other earlier games then we've got the m1 ip abrams command tank and the m1 ip abrams pretty standard stuff so the big thing here really is the mule Next up is the Recon tab. So we have Snipers. This is your first forward deployment unit of two. So the Snipers are one of them. Pretty much the same as we've seen elsewhere. You can either have them in the Humvee, the Humvee with the machine gun, or the Humvee with the grenade launcher. You've got the OH-58D Kiowa or the Kiowa Warrior as options for Recon helicopters. You also have the AH-60 Quick Fix 2. We've seen this before. That's the one with the jammer on it to jam the ground surveillance radar and also block artillery being able to use corrected fire then we've got the aero scouts a 10-man scout squad with the m72 law this is bespoke to this division at the moment humvee and blackhawk as transport options aero scouts gsi you're paying a lot of money here but you get a ground surveillance radar so these guys have just a law, an M21, and the M16s, but they are a 13-man squad as well. However, obviously you're paying 150 points to bring these in, so bear that in mind. 
Next up, for your other, and the only other, I should say, forward deployment squad are the Delta. So, these guys, I don't know why this one has jeans and a t-shirt on. All the other guys are in full combat fatigues, but this guy's got jeans and a t-shirt on. I don't know if this is a reference. If it is, someone let me know, because I can't think where it's from. But I'm assuming it's a reference. And they have a very special Humvee. This is the Humvee Delta, which is, like, open-backed. It's got a machine gun on, and it's got, like, all of their gear on the back and boxes of ammo and stuff. Which, again, I just think is a really nice new model. There's a lot of detail gone into it, you know what I mean? You would expect some of this to perhaps fall off while it's belting around the map, but otherwise it's very nice. Also, I've noticed it has this on it, the Prime Mover. This vehicle is designed to tow heavy equipment, such as artillery on the battlefield. But the other Humvees don't have that. Which I find quite interesting. All of these are recon units, by the way. All of these transport options. Anti-air tap. So you got the Aero Stingers, which are just a Stinger squad. Stinger post, nothing special. They can come in a Humvee, or they can come on a mule, and the mule has a machine gun on it. Again, nice model. Two little seats on the front. Or you can bring them in the Blackhawk, which costs you a small fortune. Then you've got the Aero Pivads, which is the same as the Pivads we've seen before. That's towed, it just uh, doesn't have the radar on it, obviously. This is a towed one, and you can bring it in with the Goat or in a Chinook. OH-58C, we've seen it before, and obviously the Chaparral. So, pretty standard stuff again there. Helicopters, we've got the standard Little Bird, we've seen it before, with the 82nd Airborne, but they do get a new one, the AH-6G Little Bird. This one has a minigun, Hydras, and a Gao-19 12.7mm minigun as well. This is our rotary cannon, as it's called up there, but you get the idea. I do love little birds. And then the other new unit is the MH60A DAP. This one is a support chopper, basically. It's got the 30mm cannon on this side, so it'll be quite nasty against vehicles even. It's got the Hydras, and it's also got the minigun times 2 on the sides of the doors there. But that'll also be reasonably effective against helicopters, so it's going to be quite a nasty piece of work, this chopper, potentially. Then you've got the Heavy Hog, we've seen it before, nothing special there. The Cobra and the Tow Cobra, the Apache, the other Apache, there's not just rockets. Then you've got this one, the ATS Apache. This is a new one with stingers and the standard Apache ATGM. So plenty of helicopters to choose from here. Air tab, a little bit more sparse. So you've got the Phantom 2 AA, the Phantom 2 HE, and the Napalm. Other divisions have these. There's nothing special here. We have the EF-111A Raven electronic warfare jet. Again, it's in the... 8th Infantry Division, though, so nothing special, but uh, just to note, Electronic Warfare, as a reminder, it works to jam enemy radar signals and obviously reduces the accuracy therein of radar AA. F-111F HE Bomber and the F-15C Eagle AA-2 variant. So the worst of the two variants, but nonetheless a decent anti-air jet. Okay, so that's everything for the 101st Airborne. Let us move on to the 56th. Okay, welcome to the 56th. Apologies, by the way, if you hear any fan noise in the background. It's either the computer, because it's very hot here today, or it's the fact I've got a fan on trying to cool me down. It should be cancelled out by the AI through NVIDIA broadcast, but who knows? I will check it afterwards but it may be that there's a little bit of sound so apologies but we have the ural as our first supply option we've got the kras 2000 supply there the mi8 mt 1500 supply and then we have the new big boy the mi6a this thing is huge and very shiny in-game when the sun is shining. It is very big and very sort of off-white. It's a huge chopper. 
2,000 supply in that one. We've got the MI9, we've seen that before, as the command. We've got the Belazor, which is just a little command jeep. Just a different variation of the jeeps. And we have this one, which is the Chaika, or Chaika? I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, so I apologize. But I love the detail on this model. I think this is really well done. Obviously, it's all like for radio antennas and stuff, these pipes, I guess. But uh, yeah, I just think it's very, very well done. Unless it's like something for like putting uh, camo netting over. But I imagine since there's wires going to it, it's all radio stuff. I'm not a military buff, so I never know for certain. But it would make sense to me. I like the design there. And the nice thing is you get three of them. They're a little bit more expensive than the Jeep. But you get three of them, and they have a bit of armor, so that's quite a nice unit. Okay. Infantry tab. It's where some of the interesting stuff is, or a lot of the interesting stuff, to be honest. And it's mostly about the transport, rather than the infantry themselves, I've got to be honest. So, much like the 101st, there isn't any forward deployment here. This is not a forward deployment division, okay? So, we got the Commander Turo, we've seen them before... And they can either come in the little Commandatura Jeep, which is available elsewhere, or they can come in this, which is the new BTR-70 Commandatura. It's just a BTR-70, but, you know, it's nice to have another transport option. 30 points, a couple of machine guns. I love these vehicles. They're so good against infantry. Because they have a decent range on these guns, and, you know, that's a lot of firepower to be putting out, and you know, that's a heavy machine gun. Anyhow, you also have this squad, which is the Okarana, unless I'm pronouncing that wrong again. <clears throat> but an infantry squad, they only come in at base vet, effectively, so just green. But they have that nice security trait, and basic weapon setup, just anti-infantry. However, they come in a very interesting vehicle. So obviously there's the Ural, but what I'm talking about is the Ural. 4320 Metler. Look at this thing. So this is the one with the heavy machine gun, a PKT, and an S5 rocket pod off a helicopter on the top. Which obviously will be hilarious in game. I can't wait to see how people use these. Going to have a section after this which I'd already recorded where I will actually take a look at some of these new units in the map, so you can see them firing and stuff. Just for a little look at these, and this will be one of the ones we look at. Okay, so then we have the DSH Sapri Commander. Decent little squad here with the RPG-7VM. Got the DHS Sapri with the satchel charges, and the DHS Sapri with the... R-P-O-R-Y-S, or Rise, as I keep calling it, which again, I think I've told is me pronouncing it wrong, but never mind. Uh, obviously, just not as good as the standard R-P-O we're used to. Let's just have a look at the vehicles available there. So there is the L-U-A-Z, which is this little thing. It's amphibious. It does look like a little boat. Then you've got the G-T-M-U-1-D, which is just a box on tracks, and the B-T-R-7-T-D. We do like the BTL-70, as I say. That's got uh, machine guns. The Sapri can have pretty much the same stuff, so you've got all three of those. But then you also have the option of the BTR-70 S5. So again, another one of those S5 rocket pods on top. Or you can have the BTR-70 S8 with an S8 rocket pod on top. 80mm rockets in there, 20 of them. So a little bit more damaging than the other one. Equally costing a little bit more. I think that's probably worth the five points, though, to be honest. And then the Sapri RYS guys, they get the BTR-70 RYS, which includes the RYS launcher on top of it. And apparently it fires very, very fast with a rate of fire of 32. Wait till you see this firing game. It seems to make a massive area of fire. I'm not sure if it's supposed to, but you'll see when the stuff I recorded before, after this section. It's very, very massive. 
Anyhow, DSH NSV Heavy Machine Gun Squad come in the LUAZ, the MU1D, or an MI8T. You got the DSH AGS 17. Again, these are just the standard squads. We've seen them before, the standard weapon systems. They've just got DSH in front of them. And again, same options for transport. Then we've got the DSH Commander. Nice little squad here. Also available to the 35th. But they do get the BMP-2D here, which they don't get in the 35th. This is a vehicle only available elsewhere to the 79th. But otherwise, pretty standard transport options. DSH RPG-16. Again, nothing too special here, but they do get the option of the MU-1D with an AGS launcher on top. This squad itself, 7-man squad with an RPG-16, which has a heck of a range. Only 13 pen, but look at that. 1,025 meter range for a ground anti-tank. Pretty good for one of these RPGs. Then you got the DSH with the RPG-7. Shorter range, much higher penetration. 7-man squad again. Pretty much the same set of transports again. And then, at the end here, we have the DSH Pulmachiki. Which, again, I'm pronouncing wrong, probably. But, these guys, 7-man squad, get the RPG-18. Sort of the worst of both worlds when it comes to anti-tank, but they do get three PKMs there, so better against infantry. And they get a nice selection of vehicles. DSH Metis Squad, 8-man squad with a Metis launcher. Always love a Metis. And they get the option of the BTR-70 AGS as well. So BTR-70 with his usual machine guns and an additional automatic grenade launcher. DSH RPG-22. Short range, a little bit higher damage than some of the others. Nothing too special other than the fact this is a 14-man squad. So it changes up our transport options. So big squad, lots of damage. These guys... Can come in a URAL, an MI-8T, an MI-8T rocket, or the MI-8 MTV rocket. So, getting a bit costly, but obviously you do have some firepower then. And then you've got the option of the DHS, DHS Afghansky. These guys, nothing too special here. They do have the RPOA. Not as good as the RIS or the other RPO, but nice to have nonetheless. High rate of fire. Okay. Special transport that they have here. The MI-24D Descent. Just special because they get it. And no one else does here at the moment. DSH SPG-9. They get the LUAZ, the BTR-70, the MU-1D, and the MU-1D SPG-9. So if you bring in the SPG-9, you can have another SPG-9 come with them on the top of that vehicle. Your first ATGM option comes in the LUAZ or the BTR-70, and the Conkers have the option of also coming in the MI-8T. And then finally, down at the bottom here, you have the LUAZ with that SPG-9 stuck on the top. So really, I mean, here, I suppose the standout things are the fact that these guys get a completely different option for transport. No one else gets that chopper. It's just for these guys. But you do have the huge 14-man RPG-22 squad. RPG-22 is not, nothing special, but uh, it is a big, chunky squad. Okay, let's move on. Okay, artillery... A lot more choice than there was on the 101st. Pretty standard stuff for the most part, though. 82mm mortar and 122mm mortar. Slightly different transport options there. LUAZ and MI8 for the 82. And the 120 needs either the URL or the MTLB. You got the Vasilek in there. You got the Nona. We've got the Desant D30 122mm coming in the MTLB Kras or the MI8T got the grad v you got the bm21 grad and you have the 2s1 all standard stuff now onto the non-standard stuff the m240 240 millimeter mortars so you have a he variant with 5 he and you have a cluster variant with the 5 he and 6 penetration so 
plenty of damage being dished out by these. Um, I will note that their rate of fire is very low. They have an immense range, 18k range. They fire all the way across the map, and they kind of fire more like an artillery piece than a mortar. But uh, yeah, they fire very slow, very very slow. Be interesting to see how people use them. But I I I was kind of disappointed by how they fired in the end, which is a shame. I was expecting like mortar firing, but it would be a bit silly. But you know, it would have been fun. So there you go. Next up, tank tab. We've got the LUAZ with an ATGM on. Just strapped to the back there. Then we've got the T62 MDK. So T62, but with that slat armor all over it. And I like the fact the slat armor is modeled in such a way that the uh, shadows go through it and stuff. You can see them on the back there. Then we've got the MD1 which is without the missile, and then the MD, which has that anti-tank missile. So not bad here, and you get a good amount of tanks. I know they're not the best tanks in the game, but with that nice missile, you get six of those. That's pretty good. Get eight of these, only two of the commands. But, you know, these are already coming in at what... Well, they're trained now, but it's effectively what used to be veterans, so... I don't think that's bad for tanks. Recon tab is the only place, again, you're going to get forward deployment. So you got the Rio stat. Seen this plenty of times before. Also with the 35th. The new unit is the ZSU-23 4M2 PSNR. So, exceptional recon unit in terms of its optics. Can only fire at ground and helicopter targets. Can no longer fire at aircraft. So just helicopters and ground. Plenty of firepower though, just a shortish range, even for helicopters in the grand scheme of things. BRDM-2, nothing special about that. DSH Razvedka, four-man squad, lots of options here. Got the LUAZ, the LUAZ with an automatic grenade launcher, which also is a recon unit. MI-8T, MI-8T rocket, the MTV rocket, and the MI-24D descent same as the chopper that was for the afghanski next up is the dsh mot razvedka so seven man squad has the nice rpg 26 these guys have the uras an option the raz btl 60 pd plenty of firepower amphibious unique to the 56th and the Razvedka BMP-2D. Again, unique to this division. I mean, the BMP-2D itself isn't, but the recon variant is. And then the MI-8 PPA, which is unique to this division as well. It's basically a jammer chopper. So much like we saw with the Fix-2, this one is basically designed to shut down ground surveillance radar and also negate corrected shots. And then finally, the other new unit here, and the Spetsnaz Gru Stinger. Four-man squad. Have the RPG-27, so plenty of damage output with 21 pen. And they have the Stinger Basic. It is the Stinger Basic, but it's still a Stinger, so it's not horrendous at all. And they can come in the LUAZ or the LUAZ with the automatic grenade launcher. Some decent options here. And nice to have a unit that is sort of capable of doing anti-infantry, anti-tank, and anti-air in this division. Okay, anti-air tab. Pretty bare bones again. We've got the DSH Igla, which can come in the LUAZ. We've got the BTR-70, the MU-1D, the MU-1D with the ZU-23-2 on top. Where are the ropes holding it in place? I can't see any ropes holding it in That's going to fall off. Normally there's ropes or wires holding it in place. MI-8T. is the other option there. That'll make them very expensive. Then you've got the URAL 4320 ZPU-4. The URAL with uh, a nice anti-air gun on there. Shortish range though. But pretty cheap. 
Then you've got the Ural 4320ZU23-2. Oh, it's just, just below the level of that. That's pretty close, but not bad. And these are some of the models that they've fixed in this version, so it's nice to see them completely finished. Afghansky, we've seen it before. 35th also have that one. And then the Strata 10M, again, plenty of divisions have that. So the new things here really are the uh, Urals with the guns on the back. And I guess the uh, ME1D, which is just another version of the Scrisette, really. Helicopters, fair few choices. You got the MI8MT, Rocket 1, the Rocket 2, and the Rocket 3, obviously available elsewhere. The Gov, which is only available otherwise to the KDA, so nice to see that getting somewhere else. The Scortney, which we've seen a couple of times before. The MI24V Rocket, the MI24P, and then new to this division is the MI24PAA, which comes with four R60M anti-air missiles. Obviously better than the Escortney in terms of the anti-air capability. In the aircraft tab, nothing to massively write home about here. It does have some new stuff. So we got the MiG-23. That's available here, there and everywhere. Got the MiG-23 AA-2. Again, it is available elsewhere. We've got the... Uh, SU-25 cluster and HE, but no SU-25 anti-tank here. We've got the MiG-27M napalm bomber, available elsewhere as well. New unit is the MiG-27K AT-1, which comes with the KH-29L, which has the longer range, and if I pin it, and then we take a look at this one, the MI-27K AT-2, another one that is unique to this division at the moment. Same penetration. Two missiles, electro-optical, but only 3,500 meter range. So this one is semi-active radar, and the other one is fire and forget. So that's the other thing to bear in mind. Otherwise, the big difference between the two is the AT-2 gets RM-70 anti-air missiles, and the AT-1 just gets 80 millimeter rockets. And then there's the MiG-27K laser guided bomber. We've seen that one before. So it's kind of a mixture. There's some really cool new units in these divisions, especially this one with those ground vehicles with, you know, rocket pods strapped to the top. I think they're going to be very fun to play. I can't wait to see what everyone does with them. But let's hop onto the map and you can have a look at me playing around with a couple of the units from this division just because I wanted to show off those rocket pod units. Okay, I thought we'd have a look at a couple of the new units just to see what they were like. So first up, I just wanted to show you this up close because I think this is very cool, just as a model. This is the new command vehicle. I just think it's a really nice detailed model. And this is the big helicopter. Do you see what I mean about it being very shiny in game? It just looks really bright white. I mean, you're not going to miss that if you go over with a spy plane. And then we have the selection here of the transport unit so we've got the metler here and it has a nice long range so the air to ground missiles can go up to 1750 so we'll just whack it about there so it's just it's just like the rocket pod off the chopper obviously pretty big spread of that range but uh fires very quickly very very quickly s5 it's exactly the same so i'll just pop it there but it'll move into range and then attack again fires very quickly really quickly we've got the s8 here again similar range but this one obviously has 80 mil rockets I don't know if it's slightly less spread, probably about the same, but there's just so many rockets in it. It fires very, very quickly. 
And then we have the RYS, which is the anti-infantry one. I'll have a look at the other models in a second. The incendiary rocket launcher, there we go. As I say, the uh, the flames on this seem massive. I don't know why. And then we'll have a quick look at these just to make sure the model's in game. So it's literally just the turret with that strapped to the top. You wouldn't think it would be very stable. And the same with this one. And then this equally, again, you wouldn't think it would be that stable, but it seems to work. And over here we have the 240mm guns and the mortars. Uh, as I say, they fire very, very slowly. These are the clusters and these are the standard HE ones. I'm just going to get them firing. Because, as I say, they take a little while to fire, and then they take a long time to fire again. Uh, the truth is, I feel like you'll get to fire these once at a vehicle or a unit, and then you may as well target something else. Because unless your opponent is completely oblivious, they're going to move their units immediately. Because, yeah, these are going to do a lot of damage. But... See, they're firing now. They fire more like tube arty than they do mortars. As I say, they don't go like right up in the air and come down. But you see how long it takes to fire again. It's like the aiming time all over again. It takes ages. So if there was a vehicle there and your enemy noticed it, they've already moved it, right? So it feels like you're going to fire these once and then move on. But maybe you'll get lucky. But there's the new units anyway. Let's have a look at the new map, which we're on right now, but I'll get rid of the units and we'll start over. Welcome to Urban Frontlines, the new map. Big city, lots of railway tracks. I've set this to noon as the time of day, just it's a bit brighter. It was dark on all the other times of day. Default for this one is evening, actually. Um, I just really like the design of this, and I want to show you if I got the center of the city here. Um, because it's the best place to demonstrate. They've made it so that some things, for example, the actual cargo containers or the train carriages, they actually block line of sight when you're like next to them. If you're in them, you can sort of peek through the gaps is the intention. But if you're at either side of them, then they will obviously block your line of sight so they almost act as if they're a little building where if you're actually inside this zone then you have slightly better vision than if you're outside it obviously you can see completely into these though so it's a bit you, know, you can't see past them but you can see clearly into them because there's gaps between and stuff and i guess you can see the legs under the uh under the actual box cars themselves and the same here at this side, look, you've just got those boxcars blocking the line of sight. I really like that just as just as something else to add to the vision and stuff for a town. Um, because you'll notice on some maps, some things you can kind of see through that sometimes you maybe feel you shouldn't be able to. I mean, <laughs> a perfect example of that is perhaps here. Um, you can see through all of these things, see? Whereas that's a reasonably big container there, but you can see through it. So, you know, it's nice that they've started adding in other things that block vision like that. Really nice big city area. And it looks it looks like a real town. Um, my understanding is that the real town or city in Germany does have train tracks like this where it splits off in the center. So you've got the two different routes here. It kind of goes off that way and then off this way. And then you've got, obviously the setup of industrial areas and residential zones and you've got a football field over here it it looks like a real town doesn't it and i've one of my things with the maps we've had so far i've never really felt like it was a real town you know it's like oh well it, it, it's a collection of buildings this is like the first one i've truly looked at it and gone this is a town this looks and feels like a real town. 
I do think it's well designed. I think it looks aesthetically very pleasing. The way it's set up. It looks more realistic. Uh, how it plays is a different matter. We'll see when it gets into the hands of everybody. But just as a map to look at and to think, wow, that's a town. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, but I think this is probably the best urban map they've done so far. I mean, I've always liked the urban maps. I think they look nice, but this one is like, this one looks like a town. This is by far the most realistic one they've done. So kudos to the map team. Very impressed with this one. If we zoom out, I haven't really looked at the points yet, so if we zoom all the way out. Loads of points on this map. So you've got deployment at this side and this side, and then the edges of the map are kind of clear, the very edges. So you could do some flanking maneuvers and things, because I don't imagine that many people will cover those, because there's, you know, there's, a, there's trees and things, but it's fairly open. Um, whereas in the middle, you've got sort of four points leaning towards one side or the other to some degree i guess i'd say probably elena center and anna are kind of more in the middle and ivan maybe um and you got fedor gregory and charitana at the back there i guess center is trying to be the center um you've obviously got the tracks which will make a difference here getting across those to get to center um, I think there's going to be some very defendable positions on this map. Especially if you get into some of these tall buildings that can see down the tracks. Like that one there. You've got some nice view there. This one as well. And these ones here. Not great, but they can see pretty far down here. So if you get some ATGMs in there, anything coming up this way from the tracks is going to be susceptible. But uh, yeah. I think the zone layout's not too bad here. You've kind of got three or four that belong to one side or the other, with Fedor and Elena kind of so-so in the middle. And then center is probably the proper center point. But looking forward to seeing how people play this. I actually think it's such a big map. I could see 10v10 tacticals being played on this. I'm not sure about full 10v10. I think, again, it's one of those maps where a full standard 10v10 might be a bit much. But maybe one with the tacticals or even a 5v5, I reckon you could get away with on this map. It just There's enough space around the sides that you can be having skirmishes to try and get around the back and stuff. But yeah, I like this map. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm quite impressed with it. Just, as I say, aesthetically, it looks like a town. But there you go, a look at the Nemesis DLC and the new map coming to Warno. Thank you very much for joining me, everyone. Please, as ever, like, share, subscribe. I'll see you all soon.